Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. In the last episode of my narrative tutorials, I showed you how to create this guy where you can walk up to him and he will check your stats before you can interact with him further. So we created this dialogue where you come up, you can ask what the game is, you can, he'll tell you about it. If you, if you insulted him, then he'd modify your charisma by 2, minus 2. If you add more than 10, he'd just say perfect, let's play. So what I've done now is I've expanded it here, where we can go through and actually run through a scenario like we would. And he'll say, you walk up through a dungeon and you see a door, what do you want to do? You can click open and then it'll roll a dice and depending on your result, we'll get you the answers. And I've done three versions of it. One where you attack the door with your sword flying through like Liu Kang. So we can have some fun with it. So what we need to do is create a new feature where we can roll a dice and then check the dice's result. And it's really easy to do. So the first thing we need to do is we need a way to store the value of it. Now we could just create a variable here and call it dice result, set it to an integer, and then we could create a condition which checks this integer. But the problem is this variable is stored on this specific dialogue. So db underscore sprigus gratius remicus. So to use that condition, we'd only be able to use it on that dialogue, which isn't a fantastic way of doing it. So what we need to do is create a variable that all dialogue can use. Now, normally we go and do this in the, in, in the C++ to add a variable in here somewhere, but there's a better way to do it. And this entire tutorial requires no C++, which is even better. So what we're going to come and do is we're going to open our dialogue and we're going to right click and we create a new dialogue just like normal. But instead, I'm going to call it db underscore master dialogue. And I'm going to open this up. You'll see it look just like a normal dialogue. But what I'm going to do is come in here and in the variables, I'm going to create a dice roll result value in here. And I'm just going to compile and save it. And now that we've done that, if we come back to our other dialogue, we can go to the class settings at the top. And we can change the parent dialogue to our new master role dialogue, like so. And you'll see nothing's changed. We've still got all the same speakers, which is our Sparitus. We've got everything as normal, but we have this new default value here of the dice roll result. Fantastic. The reason we're doing this is it lets us cast to the DB master dialogue when we're doing the conditions, which I'll show you later. But it also allows us to add other variables what aren't dialogue specific, even better. So now that we've done that, we need a way to change the value of the dice. So I'm going to open up my content drawer. I'm going to go blueprints, narrative, event. And I'm going to create a new event in here. And I'm going to call it any roll dice. Perfect. And I'm going to create a variable in here called max dice roll. And I'm going to set it to an integer. This will let us pass in whether we want a d6, a d8, a d10, a d20, anything you really want. If you don't, if you're only ever going to pass one dice at all, then you can just skip that part. In the execute event here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to do a random integer in range. And I'm just going to plug the max dice roll into the max. And I'm going to set the minimum to be one because we never want to roll a zero. You can't roll a zero on a dice. And then from the narrative component, I'm going to drag off and I'm going to do get current dialogue. And you'll see if you hover over it, it will give us a dialogue object reference, which is perfect. If we drag off one more time and do cast to master DB dialogue, we can plug this in. If you modified the C++ to add this dice variable, you wouldn't have to do this cast. But to avoid doing it the C++ method, we're going to do it this way. The advantages of not doing the C++ method is the next narrative update that comes out, it won't wipe your changes out because you've just built it into the blueprints. And from here, we can just do set dice roll result, plug it into the random integer we've generated, and then connect it all up. And you're just going to take the success anyway. And that's really it to roll the dice. Super simple. So I'm going to compile that, and I'm just going to overwrite the get graph display text. I'm going to drag off from the return value and just do an append. So I've changed my string to be roll a D, and it'll say 28, 6, dice. And now when we come in here to open the door, which is where I know I want to roll it, I'm going to add an event here, and I'm going to type my any roll dice like so. The only thing we have to pass into it is the dice roll, which will be for this one 20. And I'm going to copy this event. And I'm just going to paste it on all three of these. Technically, I could place it on the node before, but this gives me a little bit more advantage if I want to do anything specific later on. There we are. So now the dice will roll, but we've currently got no way of checking if it's actually worked. So this is where we need to create our next condition. So I'm going to open my content drawer again, and I'm going to jump into narrative conditions. And in here, I'm going to create a new condition and I'm going to call this NC check dice result. 
I'm going to overwrite the check condition here. And just like we did a minute ago, I'm going to drag off from the native component. I'm going to get the current dialog and I'm going to cast it to our new master dialog. This master dialog, you can put anything in you like, any variable and access it as long as you cast to the master dialog. And there's nothing wrong with going back through and changing all of your previous dialogues to be this master dialog. It won't affect it. From here, I can get the result like so. And then this is where we do the checks on the result. So I'm going to add a variable here and I'm going to say more than value and I'm going to put an in. So I'm going to drag off from this dice roll result. I'm going to put more than or equal to and I'm going to drag in my more than value here. And I'm going to connect that up and then return the value like so. So now if we come in, we get the current dialog, we get the current roll result. If our roll result is more or equal to the more than value, so say we need to roll a 13 and this dice result is 14 it's more than or equal to this value so it'll return true now we can open up the next get graph display text and in here i'm just going to drag off the return value add an append and i'm going to say the die is more than the value so 13 14 and that's it it's really surprisingly simple so what we're going to come and do now is on all of the outputs after we roll a dice so a 20 so i'm going to grab the condition and i'm going to say check dice result and i'm going to say the more than value is 20. so you can only access that one if you've got 20. for this one this is my average one so i'm going to set this to anything more than six it's just a door opening but on this last one i want it to only be one which means if we put one in two three four five all the way to 20 will be okay and that's not what we want we need a way to basically say you must equal this number. So I'm going to go back to our check dice result here and I'm going to add another variable called less than value like so. I'm going to add a branch just before we start doing the return and the dice roll result and I'm going to drag in our more than value here. I'm going to say if this more than value is more than zero then it means we've got a value into it so I want it to check the more than value like so. However if we're less than that then we want to check against the less than value instead. So I'm going to drag off from down here. I'm going to get the die roll result again. And this time I'm going to say less than or equals. I'm going to plug in our less than value. And then I'm going to re return that value instead, like so. So now all we need to do is update the get graph display text. So I'm going to add a branch in here, holding B and clicking with the mouse. The condition will be the more than value is more than zero. If it's more than zero, then we can just return the normal return value like so. If it's less than zero, then instead we need to return the less than. So we will say die is less than and then we can return this like so. Perfect. Now I can come back in here. This more than 20 will just say is it 20 or more with stats OK. But with the less than one, we can now come in and say is it less than or equal to one? Just like so. So now if I test it, you're walking through a dungeon and you see a door, what do you want to do? I'm going to say open the door. It will roll the dice and then play the result from the dice. So I say open the door, the dice rolls. It says the door opens, but it was trapped. You take two hit points of damage. And there we go. So it successfully came here and rolled something within there. Just so we can test what it's going to roll, I'm going to open my event here. <coughs> and just before it returns the value, I'm going to add a print statement and I'm just going to print out the result like so. So now every time it rolls the dice, we can see specifically what it's going to roll. So what do we want to do? We want to open the door and then you will see at the top it rolled a 16. So the door opens, but I take two points of damage because I didn't check for traps. And that's it. So now I can come in and I can populate the rest of these just like we've done above. So I've now successfully plugged in all the dialogue with specific dialogue. So you can see he's now asking me, so I'm going to attack the door with my sword, flying all Liu Kang style. And you will see, I rolled an 18, so it says you ran towards the door, and then you get a disadvantage because everybody inside heard you because you were silly. So I'll come in, and I will say this time I'll check for traps. It says you check for traps. 20! I rolled a trap! I managed to deactivate it and take it as an item. You can use it later. Fantastic! And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you create a dice roll. You can absolutely modify this check with dice result to connect to your character and add your stats if you want to, or if you've got some kind of perks, that's super easy to add as well. All you do is right click and get your player pawn, cast it, and then get your stats and do the modifications you want to. Super easy. I hope this helps. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.